welcome to my uh, presentation today on on or t presentation or talk about neurodiversity or functioning on the spectrum. So, uh, about two and a half years ago, my daughter came home and wanted to have a neuropsychological evaluation done, and I was like, "What?" Uh, I spoke to my wife. I said, "No, nah, she doesn't need that." She's perfectly normal. This is just something that she read online. But she insisted. So after numerous evaluations, doctor, doctor appoint, uh, appointments, um, psychology interviews and all that, we got the verdict. Autism type 1. And me, me and my wife, we went to... Yeah, never psychological trainings, you know, group sessions, speaking to other parents, watching movies. I read books, I read uh, blog posts, I watched videos, good and bad. I've been like studying uh, on the side of my my job uh, in the in cloud and computing, as as we all do. But I've been studying that a lot. But deep down. I still had that feeling, so it, it was a doubt, so I, I really don't think so, because she's no Rain Man, she, she's just, just like uh, how I was, she's just like me. So if you look at this picture, and you close your eyes, and you think about, you're walking, it, it's, a, it's a warm summer morning, you're walking in the forest. You feel the moist uh, under your feet. The moss is uh, soothing. From a far distance, you hear uh, you hear bir birds, or perhaps even a woodpecker trying to find some some breakfast. Now open your eyes, keep that mind, uh, that memory, and then look at this. Oh, look at that! That's dead branches down there. Oh, th they're good to to make a fire of. Oh, look, blueberries. Oh, a squirrel. Oh, the pine needles are really hurting my feet. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I see some, I see some moss. Th that's good because that that is nutritious. It it tastes like it's nasty, but I can survive on it. And speaking of that, I wonder if there is a place somewhere that if I get lost, that I can build a shelter, because the d dead branches on those pine trees. Uh, or fir trees are uh, excellent in creating a fire. Speaking of that, did you notice that there are no leaf trees? There are no pine trees? It's only fir trees. So the nevro, uh, the autistic spectrum disorder is not a one thing. It is a different way of looking at the world. So it's not a linear thing that goes from black to white across all the it's a spectrum that covers like all the dimensions that we know and probably some that we do not know. What is uh, uh, a characteristic in the nevro uh, where's my glasses it's they are here so <laughs> I, I really need to, to look at my notes as well. So uh, the characteristics for a person that is uh, within the spectrum is that they have difficulties in some certain areas. They have difficulties in verbal communication or can have uh, uh, difficulties in verbal communication. They have social uh, problems with social interaction they have uh, problems with uh, behavior, for instance. But what we must keep in mind is that these uh, diagnosis criteria is going to be a bit more technical uh, later on. But those are made by people that probably do not have this um, disorder. And the thing is that we talked about this before. So disorder or syndrome or something, that's a word with a negative sound. Is it negative? I don't know. Let's let's see if we can find out if it is negative or if it actually is a positive thing. 
So when I spoke about the criteria, this is taken from the DSM-5. That is a psychological um, rule book on how to, to find a person that is I on the spectrum. So we don't have to read all this, but in general there are two groups of people. They are the ones that play on, on their own the typical that we might think about. They play with the Legos, they order them up in lines and by color and by size and doing all that. Then we have the other one that uh, observes the other kids playing. They go in and go say, no, you're doing it wrong. This is how we should do. We used to do that. No, no, I tell the teacher, no, we go this way and then you do that. So they like bully the rest of the other ones. They do not understand the social interaction. They say in, in DSM-5 there's two groups, but it's actually a third group as well. And that is something that they start to find out now, and that, are fem uh, that is females. Because girls, or women, do not act like this. So, and the typical thought of an autistic person is a boy because they get noticed females are chameleons they hide so they watch so I I look at you uh, that's Debbie oh she's really successful what she's wearing she's wearing pink uh, I'll do pink oh what they're playing with they're playing with Barbies I do a hundred Barbies and then they mimic they fake it till they make it but it's not real they use logic to uh, put on a face that makes them social, uh, socially accepted and that can, when they're in, in kindergarten, th it, it works but when they grow up the demands goes uh, on to the female, uh, to, th to the person and then other things starts to happen and when I say females, it is, it, this is complicated because it's the brain uh, and we humans do not understand our brain properly uh, yet. So that uh, uh, behavior is found in boys as well. But the typical is boys are in the first two groups, females in the third, but they can transfer between the groups as well. Uh, they have a problem of reading faces, so we get taught you should look one in the, in the eye, you should see them in the eye, and, and a, an autistic person is why? There's no information there. Why should I look you in the eye? I can't see anything out of that one. They have a problem in relations, uh, relationships. When, when uh, adults get diagnosed, they're, they're, they're spouse it's like oh now i understand what it's like uh, why it feels like hugging a log it's like yeah and there are more so they are, have stereotype movements they can do repeatedly do things and they have uh, uh, they thrive in routines. So we're in a developer conference, so we do the Kanban boards and the stand-up meetings and all that. They, they love them as well as long as they're on Monday between 1, 110 and 120. Not before, not after, not on another day. But that is, I'm, I'm generalizing now. Some people uh, adopt to, uh, like that. Some, uh, uh, some people with, with autis uh, autism have a different way of coping with those changes. I need to get my so I don't read on the screen. So <coughs> uh, the DSM five is is intended for kids. So as soon as as the diagnosis is uh, is pinpointed the sooner the help can be provided. So when a young uh, human, uh, yeah, we all know that the, the brain uh, evolves um, much faster when we're young than when we're older. So the sooner uh, 
you can get help, uh, provide help to the person with, with an ASD disorder, the, the quicker they will learn. They will not, it's not a disease. I, I don't think it is a disease. It's, a, it's something else, and we, I, I will go into that later, but they will learn how to, to, uh, to interact with people that aren't on the spectrum. Um, and also, the, to get the diagnosis, you must have a problem, an issue of some sort. So there is a uh, likelihood that there are people that are on the autism spectrum that do not have any problem that, uh, and by that they do not get the diagnosis. And this is also a, the intellectual disability. That was something that I, I sort of hooked up on when my daughter did the evaluation. I know that she is smart. She is extremely smart, and all parents say that they're extremely smart, but she is. She thinks four steps ahead when she does a math problem, and she really doesn't understand why they focus on, on this, because that doesn't relate to what happens in the third line after this one. So they learn in a completely different way. So the measure of intelligence is made, those tests are probably made by people that aren't on the spectrum because they learn in a different way. This is a neurotypical. So in the autism world, you have the NT person, the neurotypical syndrome. And this is a sort of a jokey one. So neur neurotypicals, that is a 100% genetic uh, disease. They have an obsession with social interaction. They think they are better than anyone else. They judge people. They, they push people that are different aside. So uh, this is comes from the autism um, community. So one person, an adult that got the diagnosis, made the reverse diagnosis for a person that aren't on the spectrum. So over time, and this is interesting, and we can, you can interrupt me at any time, because if you have any questions, I, I can try to answer them. I'm no PhD in psychology. I'm, a, I'm, an, in, in, I'm an ops guy. I'm, I'm one of the guys from the basement in, in your company. So the ones that, that ask stupid questions sometimes. But if we look at this time, timeline, in 1975, it is really crappy here, but it says one in 500, uh, 5,000 were diagnosed on the, on the spectrum. And you can see on the curve that this rises. And you can question why. So I think it was a couple of years ago. Do you remember when, uh, I think it was in like Disneyland or Disney World or something in, in uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco or something? It was uh, an outburst in measles. And they started to blame, so they thought that the, the vaccine, uh, the, the reason why uh, there was an outburst in measles was that the parents were afraid to va give vaccine to their kids so the kids wouldn't develop uh, autism. This was based on an, on, a, on an article from England that got axed. The person that made the article lost their, their doctor's license and all that. So everything, ev everyone sort of uh, closed that discussion. But still, we see it in our social media that there's discussions about if uh, whether or not uh, vaccine causes autism. But if we look at this in 1975, I'm born 1972, so I'm an old fart. My mother said everyone with, oh, they, they, are they, they are the funny ones. People got, still got in, 19, uh, in the 70s in Sweden locked up in facilities. So that was a weakness. Something happened along the line around 1990 when the diagnosis got more widely spread. So in 1975, 
uh, Leo Kanner, he's one of the, the persons uh, that worked with uh, on the autism, autism spectrum. He had a very w uh, narrow way of, of uh, identifying people on the, uh, on the spectrum. That changed in 1990 when a, an English woman, with the help from her husband who spoke German, translated Le uh, Leo Asperger's uh, th uh, theory on the, on the spectrum from, from the 1940s, which was much wider. So, and then all of a sudden it became easier to get a diagnosis. So. In 1975, there were a, were a couple of, of people in the world that made the diagnosis. That opened up. And it still opens up. So today, you say that one in 68, uh, one, one child of 68 are, on the, uh, are somewhere on the spectrum. So the spectrum could be Rain Man on this end. And over here, it could be Dan Aykroyd, who is also in, an, uh, uh, on the autism spectrum. He's an Asperger, have you all heard about? So Asperger and autism type 1 are the same. But we have the dark figure as well. So when I grew up, if I rem if uh, now when I study this, I can't help when I go to conferences, when I go to, uh, to the office, when I look myself in the mirror, am I one of the gray ones? I might be, I don't know. I actually contemplated about it to do a, an evaluation for myself, but then I thought, I do not have a problem with it, so why should I? Because I see so much in my daughter in myself. I um, personally um, ha sometimes have a problem with social interaction. So I, I, uh, I analyze, I watch people. I, I love to be in an airport. I travel a lot for work. So I love to be in an airport and just observe people and see how do they behave in different, uh, different situations. For instance, I don't know if I'm on the spectrum or not. But we do not know how many of, of the uh, humans on the globe that would have been diagnosed uh, when they were children. Because something happens with living, hu uh, living creatures on the earth, right? We have, we have a huge divergence in, in mammals. We have rats. We have uh, cats, seals, apes, kangaroos. And if we look down to the to our branch of this, the primates, we have even more. And if we look at the evolution of humans, we see that things have changed over time. A couple of, uh, of, of 100,000 years ago, we have the Homo neanderthalensis and the Homo heidelbergensis and the Homo sapiens living probably side by side. If we look at how the brain has evolved at the same time. So we started out here with Lucy and then we end up with Einstein up there. Their brains have evolved. So, if we continue to look in the brain, so if we see, look at the male and the female brain, we see differences in here as well. We all know that men and women aren't, uh, they aren't wired in the same way. We reason about things in a different way. So that's why a, a mixed team of, of male and female and of course, if they are anywhere in between here as well, but uh, that that makes a good team. But if we look at the wiring on the ASD brain, that adds an a, an, a, another dimension to it. And keep in mind that 
females and males are still different so a female Asperger or Aspie or a female on the autism spectrum doesn't look like a male under the autism spectrum because they are completely different and we're, we're in IT we know that just a single digit in, in a, bi a single digit in a binary code changes the result so if we take a color and then we just add or remove just a, a small piece of that that just gives a slightly different nuance of that of that color and if we in our spare time do paintings and so on we know that if we just do with the basic colors the image becomes flat if we put nuances on it it becomes alive so I don't know how, how much time do I have left probably a lot <laughs> just 20 minutes fantastic <laughs> I thought this would take a long time so uh, uh, Tim Atwood he's a a specialist in in on the autism spectrum he's been been working on this for quite some time so uh, like 40 years or something is Asperger's or ASD or the spectrum the next step of the evolution of man so now since we have a lot of time left <laughs> uh, I open up for, for, for discussions and, and questions I don't know I, all of the answers in this but so one, one of the things that I, I made some some uh, uh, some extra slides in here I think if I still no I remove them I think I need a lot more slides <laughs> How old is your daughter? my daughter yeah. she is turning 16 yep. so let's put let's put him up there because he is in is an He's a brilliant man and pleasant person to listen to as well. So she's 16. How did she resonate that she wants to make this test? Was no, she 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 noticed in uh, the the question was that how did my daughter find out or uh, suspect that she was uh, on the spectrum, and she had a a when she grew up, she played beside the other kids their parents uh, told their kids not to play with her because she was too loud because when she w she was happy she was extremely happy and when she was angry she was extremely angry and there was like she's binary in that way so the, the nuance when she was a kid between those two didn't didn't work so when she grew up it, it worked probably quite well no if, yeah, I actually looking back it probably didn't but at the time it felt okay but when she got up into to uh, uh, how do you say that in like high school the demands or the requirements from the school were much higher and she had a problem she had no friends she said that oh the only time I get friends is that when no one else wants to play with them they call me so I'm their spare friend so and she started to observe that and she's been studying that without our knowledge in her room so she she's been looking up all the things is this is me this is me this is me and what what surprised me is that she makes lists about everything she plans her entire day on her phone in 5 minute blocks so she knows exactly what she will do uh, during the day she do not fall for fall into that uh, model of of uh, she needs to have a schedule she can adjust but she needs to prepare herself to adjust then she moves a block of time until later one of the criteria in here if I go back and I know that 
presentation and, and going back and forth is crap <laughs> but um, social interaction she has no problem in social interaction she can be in here she could stand up here and talk to you but when she goes out the door she would crash and when I mean crash is that she would probably go in take a taxi go home and sleep for like four hours because it's exhausting to an uh, to a person on the on the spectrum to do things because they play a game and I find it funny when I'm in technical conferences and people say no I'm not going out for 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 a dinner tonight I need to crash in my hotel room and I was like and I I, my, my, I start to think hmm people that talk about no I'm not an, uh, I, I'm I'm an introvert but I have learned how to speak with other people. Hmm. So you you start you 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 become you become like an amateur psychologist on your own there. So you start to evaluating people, and what they've done is also they evaluated people in history. So much points towards that uh, Isaac Newton was on the spectrum. Albert Einstein. They think that Bill Gates might be there, most likely. Uh, a lot of people are on, on the spectrum. One, one that I was actually surprised was Sir Anthony Hopkins. And the reason why he did the evaluation is that his wife demanded to, to get the answer, what's wrong with you? <laughs> the strength of, of a person on the spectrum is that they can focus they have a, a sense of, of detail that a neurotypical person do not have. They can focus extremely well on reading code, for instance. And they do not just read code, they read the code. So they see this. So companies like SAP, my employer Dell EMC, HP, all of Microsoft, everyone has a lot of Asperger's and autism people um, employed because they think outside of the box and if you say that to an to an uh, to an, uh, to one on the on the spectrum they say what box because they do not understand why no it's clear as it's <laughs> it's clear as milk to them so Any, yes Yes. There's a lot of things that are awesome about being on the spectrum. Yeah. And that's what I think society needs to focus more on and pick up more. Not the problems, but the things that we can do that other people can't do. Yeah. A neurotypical person is used for that. So what, what are your thoughts on, on, on this? My, 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 my thoughts on this is that I actually think that it, that's true. I, I uh, when I went down this path in my and this is also why I sort of it's, it's suspect that I might yeah you never know I'll let you know if I'm if I if I ever do the evaluation but at the same time so I personally s in Swedish we say can you say that in English you get snowed in on something so you do what just one thing and that is the one thing that you do all the time so when I was younger I played video games and I played a lot of video games then I started, uh, yeah, when I started in IT, I did all of the IT. So the organizers here, Jessica, and the, they asked me wh what my hobbies are. This is what I do. <laughs> and then I'm a dad in between, and I try to, like, mix that. But my thoughts on this is that I actually think that uh, people on the spectrum has been around all of the time. Because without people on the spectrum, we wouldn't have put, taken that stone and putting it on the branch to make a spear. We wouldn't have tried to stand up to see, oh, 
Jesus, oh my God, I can see a far way when I stand up. The other ones would probably crawl, we would probably crawl around still throwing um, feces at each other uh, somewhere in Africa. <laughs> so I actually think that we just start to discover the the uh, how the human brain works and how that uh, how a, or not no how a how a human works and how we interact into each other and one of the reasons I think that this pops up is that we are in a te technological s uh, society now so we we came from the industry uh, society with spinning jennies and and automobile industries and go into the information industry and all of a sudden the demand for for people that think differently uh, is higher so i do hope that the uh, uh, environmental issues and the the uh, technical challenges of colonizing in the moon for instance are bridged because I think it was Temple Gradin that said that uh, we need all the brains. We cannot remove. So if you're dyslectic, that doesn't mean you're stupid. It means that your brain is wired differently. You see things differently. So your strength might not be in remembering things in the short term. So a dyslectic person, for instance, can be a dyslectic when they read. They can have no problem in reading, but they can have a problem with their short-term memory. And this can still be diagnosed in the dyslectic, uh, as dyslectics. But they have strengths somewhere else. So uh, everyone on the autism spectrum have weaknesses, and those weaknesses are sometimes severe, but their strengths are on the other end. So there are, uh, yeah, we, we all see in the m movie Rain Man, where you can like count matches but there are people that can listen to a jazz song one time and then recite it perfectly just after listening it to it once there are other people that can uh, take a a dim chord on a piano that's like you know all the fingers on the piano and they can take out exactly which notes have been used so the the combination of that is uh, that that's my that's my answer or really long answer to to the question on where I think this uh, fits in and I actually think that I was uh, also surprised when I asked we, because we were in a a, a telephone com uh, conference and we started to talk about diversity and there was a, a presenter from Microsoft that presented on diversity and she said that in a meeting room we all know that when we go in there's always someone that wants to be uh, heard they take over the conversation they they speak when, when someone talks they say, no 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 they like this this they might be on the spectrum so they might not understand that they offend people so so in the diversity, when they talk about diversity, I, was o I always thought about it as male and female, that we should all be equal. But it's not male and female. It's all of the things. So I, if, if I accept a woman in my, uh, in my team, and she accepts a man in my team, but if that woman is on the spectrum, and the man is somewhere else, so th there's, it's not black and white. It is diverse in all the all of the all of the verticals and horizontals and uh, yeah it's just a it's a mess <laughs> yes yes that is a, an excellent question so because since I suspect I've been reading up on that so the thing uh, that is amazing and I, I didn't take that image now so we all know how the uh, if we remember when we went to school how the brain works and the the uh, and the nerves and all the uh, synapses that that connects the 
the brain. So when we learn something, we create new synapses. So they made a, a test on a test group where they had o always have a control group, they have a test group, and they have uh, uh, sometimes even a, a uh, three groups. So they had them to play the piano for ta 10 days. They had a control group that had to be in a room listening to, <laughs> to the other groups playing piano, good or worse, for 10 days. I would hate to be in that control group. But what they saw is that just after 10 days, and these were adults, the brain activity um, for the ones that, that played the piano increased. So they start to learn, so they created new connections in the brain, while the control group were, yeah, of course, not changed. They have also made tests on, uh, are you aware of Hodgkin's uh, Hodge, Hodge, Hodge disease? That is a, a disease where you start to get spasms. That is a genetic, dis it, it's a genetic disorder, it's not a disease, it's a genetic disorder that comes when you, when you grow up. If you have that gene, you will develop it. What they found is that they could modify in mice a similar gene. So they made one uh, control group, of course, with mice that are, th but this time they, they uh, uh, tested also the envir em environmental factors into it. So the control group were mice in a quite boring environment. The, uh, the test group were in uh, in a more stimulated environment with the uh, wheels and uh, swings and whatever they had in there. It, it, it's stimulating for, for a mi mouse. Um, so they tested. So the, uh, the, uh, the control group uh, wasn't changed. The, the, uh, they had two groups of, of mice with, with that altered gene. The ones that had the same environment as the control group developed uh, Hodgkin, uh, that's a tongue, that's a killer for me, yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they evolved, they, 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 uh, the symptoms became quite obvious, but the group that was in the, um, uh, the environment with, with activities and stuff to do, so they felt good, they didn't develop that. Uh, they, they develop the, 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 the disorder, but not as severe as the other ones. So there is things in the brain that we do not understand, and the environment have a lot of, of impact into it. So answering your question is that it's hard, because if uh, uh, a person that is not diagnosed have faked it till they made it and it's like driving a car when you start driving the car you think about that so you know it's like oh no that was the wind wiper it's not the turn signal and then you start to do yeah all the the footwork and the handwork and all that and all of a sudden you can turn on the radio and speak in your on your phone even if you shouldn't but you can so it it's it's nothing that is genetic. We learned it, but it's in the spine. We know exactly how to do it. So if a person on the autism spectrum has learned, and, and it, it, it has become one of, uh, it, it, it's the, the learned behavior has been na become natural to them, how can you spot them? The only way to spot them is that when they go to lectures like this, if it's good or bad, I don't know. But or watch movies, and it's like, yeah, that was me when I was a kid. I did exactly like that. So when I was a kid, I didn't play with other kids. I played with Lego. I could sometimes my mom could come into my room and they'd say, "Are you dead?" No, I was just doing the stuff that I did on my own. But then I grew up. I went out, played hockey. I did all the other things as well. And uh, yeah. Yes. So something I've been thinking about is the fact that um, nowadays, when we're in this, this social media.
media high-tech society, where we have these constant, constant influxes of, of simulation being, like there's, there's our phones, we scroll, people don't even go to the bathroom by themselves anymore, there's always yeah. a phone or something. Um, I've been thinking about the fact that people on the spectrum, maybe with like the ADAD, yeah. uh, I haven't, but but it's an it's an excellent question. So my my response to that would be uh, that people on the spectrum are are the customers of your software because they do not socially interact in person. They inter they rather interact using their cell phone or internet or email or yeah. So. Uh, the stress that is put on a neurotypical one with all this information because we are, I, it's funny because I, we, I had a discussion uh, around that a couple of years ago and I said our kids nowadays they do a lot of things at the same time so they play with video game they watch Nickelodeon they have their friends on, on, on their phones and they control all three of that at the same time. So we, we had a discussion as whether the quality of whatever they're doing is that good or bad. Is it better to do one thing and do it properly or to juggle five th things at the same time? But at the same time, if they're on the spectrum, they might do that to ease their brain, to offload things. So. Uh, and th that is also one thing that I forgot to, to uh, talk about that is self-inflicted injury so uh, that is quite common uh, the percentage of suicides for people on the autism spectrum over exceeds the percentage of suicides for ne neurotypicals because they do not understand the neurotypicals. My daughter, she cuts herself. Sometimes when she's really, really angry, she tweezes herself so hard because she needs to have the feeling. You, we all heard the, the song from, from um, The Man in Black, Help Me Now. Johnny Cash, I hurt myself just to make me feel. So she does that when she when she gets a meltdown, when when something doesn't work, she hurts herself. She doesn't want to make uh, commit suicide, but she wants to have the pain because she wants to feel. And that is that is really scary. And if you take that into uh, when you grow up, you go into puberty. Uh, well, everyone in puberty, everyone is on the spectrum. So. Basically, every everyone should have a diagnosis when they're in the puberty because they're mental. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I I love my daughter, but she's yeah, she's oh, no, oh, she's mental. Yeah, but but it's important to understand. So, so uh, for instance, uh, another thing also that that comes into that is that the we have all heard about the curling of of kids. I've heard that from my mother, and remember she was in. Let's go in. Let's go back here. My father doesn't know my daughter's got uh, on the spectrum because he would never understand it. He's probably there himself, but he would never understand it. He will never accept it. But back here, it, it was a. It was. It was ugly to be diagnosed. You were one in five thousand kids you were the uh, psychologist can work their entire career without ever meeting one and now so uh, I lost my way there what, what did I talk about <laughs> your, your 
Yeah, yeah, my daughter and and uh, 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 my mother. Yes. So people on the spectrum had a much better... It worked much... Yeah, I, I, I agree. So the school... school yeah. The, com the comment was regarding the school system. So the school system back here was that we had a five-grade... Uh, uh, five-graded um, report. So it was one, you suck. Five, you're the best. Everyone should be in the middle. So you have a few ones that are on the top. We need to have a few ones on the bottom because then the majority will be in the middle. This is the Swedish way of 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 logom. <laughs> it's just just enough. So they could hide. Not just hide. I mean, it was it was a lot easier. There was respect for the teacher. There was a schedule. You knew what was going to happen. You knew when it was going to happen. It was much more structured. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and now, now. Now, back then, they may, might, you know, they didn't have. We people then did not have as much problems as a kid on the spectrum would have today. In school yes. Because it's awful. Yeah, because it's awful. Because now the ki the, the most of the teachers in in the schools are born I in the summer of '68. Yeah. It was a lot of peace and love at that time, and it's yeah, it doesn't fit people in the on the spectrum. They want to have order. They want to know what what to do. What are the requirements, and so they can can uh, can work. And and speaking of that, also is that uh, on the spectrum you could be either really really good at uh, theoretical uh, subjects like computers, like uh, maths, and stuff like that. You could also be very artistic. So you cannot communicate well in words but you can communicate extremely well in images and paint paintings and photographs. You, uh, you're in a recording studio. You have that perfect pitch. You hear exactly when someone is off key. But that is also a problem because if you're in your music class in school and the teacher sings off key, they will let you know. For sure, <laughs> and you uh, and a never typical teacher would be like, "Oh yeah, but I was singing. I was trying to be nice, but yeah, but Miss or Sir, you were you were singing off key, and that was like hitting them in the head." So, uh, yes. Yes? Um, how come as it grows and becomes more broad and it's still called the market? Yeah, the thing is that that is also s something that they discuss. So before they call it, they call it autism spectrum disorder. So on this spectrum, we have uh, ADHD, we have ADD, we have uh, autism. They are graded in one, two, three. So one is, is light, you will probably not notice it. Three is uh, severe. All of these uh, uh, diagnoses intervene. So my daughter, she, she's autistic uh, type one. And this summer, she's also, she's, she's al uh, she also has H HDHD, uh, HDHD. And those two diagnoses like conflict to each other because an autism person do, do not want interaction, they want peace and quiet. And the typical HDHD person is the opposite. They want to be around other people and things need to happen all the time because they cannot c calm down. So uh, the uh, diagnosis will, will change and they will include more. If that is good or bad, I don't know, honestly. Because as I thought when my daughter got her, is that this is an acronym that some psychologist will get a Christmas bonus out of. So they want to put that label on everyone. So I don't know if it's good or bad.
but if on the evolution if the, that is true so I don't know this is just something that I think about and I know that there are some scientists with with a lot of degrees and a lot of student loans that's been b uh, that are studying this if this is true then what is normal so if in one in 68 are on the spectrum now what would it look like 40 years from now would the neurotypical not be the norm anymore would the autism spectrum be the norm? So it is a, yeah, um, I feel like I want to have a sheet and dig myself down in a hole and think about that for a while. <laughs> be a, like a bit philosophical. Yes? Wh why it becomes more, have, have become more common? Epigenetics, I'm not aware of that word. And uh, you speak Swedish? Yeah. Uh, what's that in Swedish? Yes. Oh, excellent. So the the uh, that fancy word that I didn't know about is is the genetic one. So one thing that they have found is that there is a genetic connection. That's not the answer. It's it's a piece of the answer. So if your parents have are on the spectrum, it is you have a l higher likeliness to be to be uh, to have a child uh, or or be on the spectrum yourself. But sometimes that can happen in there is no genetic trace for for a person on the spectrum. It's a mutation that appears. They know that uh, older. Uh, an older man that gives uh, produces a child in in his late uh, <laughs> majority or his late years have a mo higher likeliness of of uh, producing a child on the spectrum. There's also some medications that that uh, women uh, should avoid when they're pregnant. Pregnant that also can create a mutation that will cause autism o or could cause autism but they do, do not know why because they discover new genes all of the time that are in, uh, uh, related to the spectrum and since the spectrum is so wide and so, so broad everyone sort of fits into the spectrum more or less so it's a yeah, they do not know, but it's it's really interesting. So the the funny thing about that is that Sasha Baron Cohen has a cousin <laughs> that actually works as a psychologist in this field. And if you look that up, he has a a uh, some really interesting lectures about uh, the genetics and uh, 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 neurodiversity, which is which is really interesting. Yes, and I'm uh, I'm uh, done. Thank you.